Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to optimize your animation rendering in iClone. You'll become familiar with a couple of tips and tricks that will help you to enhance your iRay render workflow. iRay version 1.1 introduces smart caching, which means that the data caching procedure for both iClone and Character Creator is greatly accelerated. You'll notice that when I transform the camera position, there's now a much faster refresh for the new camera angle. In just a few seconds, you'll be able to see a fairly accurate initial representation of the direction your rendering is going. Switching to other cameras will do the same thing. The preview window will refresh almost immediately after cameras are switched. Let's take a look at replacing the IBL now. Let's swap out the IBL for something a bit brighter. You'll see that essentially it will take longer for the new IBL to load than it does for the adjusted results to appear in the preview window. We have a lot of bloom on this render, so we can easily take the strength of the IBL down quickly and get a less glaring result. Let's tweak the camera rotation now to get a slightly different angle so we can have a slight glare off our character's right shoulder armor and a reflection from his sunglasses. If we want to even out the lighting a bit more, we can go up to the Create menu and add in a directional light. The default angle that it adds in will provide a bit more of an even light to our scene atmosphere. Once we add it in, we can use the E hotkey to bring up the rotation gizmo for our light and adjust the direction, and also adjust the multiplier value to give us a more subdued setting. Another cool thing about this scene is that little floating helper dude here has his own little point light, which we can activate from the scene manager. You can see that once we activate this light, it will immediately render in the preview window. We can also change the color, and as soon as we press OK in the selection window, the iRay render preview will immediately reflect the changes. The same thing goes with any transformations we make to the prop position. Again, using the E hotkey, I can select and rotate the prop itself, along with the subprops that it contains. Due to smart caching, the updates in the preview window will be available almost immediately. Another cool way to be creative with your renders is to change the background. We can go into the Scene Manager and deactivate the sky from here, then go into Project Settings and select Activate Image. That will load up the default grey gradient background, but we can easily replace that by double-clicking and selecting our cool desert DOF background. Let's take a look now at adjusting the auto convert material for the super shader. These can be found in the iRay render window in the materials tab. What I'm doing here is selecting the materials assigned to the front of our character's armor and pumping up the base material multiplier parameter. You'll see this will enhance the strength of those mesh materials, in this case making them appear brighter and stronger. We can also take down the roughness value and increase reflectivity values, then top it all off with a coating effect. In order to get a more copper type of coating, we can adjust the color value to a deep red and further increase the strength and coat value to enhance the look further. Another way you can achieve the look you want is through MDL materials. These can be found in the media tab of the content window under their own folder title IMDL. These are special materials that are only meant to be used with iRay renders. Here we're simply clicking and dragging the MDL directly onto the sunglasses. When we do, you'll see that it'll turn a super cool looking purple color. The values of these MDLs can also be adjusted in the Materials tab of the iRay Render window. Here, I'll just simply change the transmission color to more of a blue hue, and we can see the final results right here. It's important to remember that when you're moving objects in your scene, only the moved object will be refreshed, while any other objects driven to animate via the constraint will not. Let's use the Look At function as an example. If I select my character, and then use the Look At constraint to have him look at the prop, Anytime I move the prop, it will be refreshed. However, notice that the character's head will not move. That is because the character's head is being animated via the look at constraint. If you want to see what the render will look like with the constraint movement results, you need to manually go into the Environment tab of the iRay Render window and click Preview. Alternately, you can go to the Next Frame via the Next Frame button in the Playhead area. Another thing to be aware of is that in a scene with lots of objects, scrubbing the timeline will require that the entire project be recast for rendering. So this is something you'll likely want to avoid for faster render refresh times. You can see that when I scrub through the timeline of this project, there is a noticeable delay when refreshing. This is partially resolved by using the animated object list, which is only available in iRay for iClone. Since the character in this scene is animated, I can add him to the animated object list in order to reduce the recaching time. In this case, the character itself is called root node with a two in parentheses. Make sure that you also have the refresh listed objects only box selected. 
Here is a side-by-side -side comparison between when an object is not added to the animated list versus when it is. As you can see, the scene where the character was placed in the animated object list refreshes in 5 seconds, while the original project will take roughly 18 seconds to refresh. Therefore, it's essential to know which objects are animated in your scene, and placing them in the animated object list will save you huge amounts of time when rendering with iRay in iClone. Let's talk a bit now about exporting a sequenced MI file. When you're ready to render an animated scene, simply click Render Scene in the Settings tab. Let's click Save MI Scene and select our render range first. An exported MI file will first integrate static objects into the list in a single file, and then other objects into sequenced MI files. Therefore, selecting Save MI Scene in the Render options will save considerable amounts of render time. Notice in the file list here that when the Save MI Scene is activated, that the MI files for each frame will be considerably smaller once it's activated, and that leads to a 9 minute difference in render time for this short scene. If you're rendering larger numbers of frames, that time saving goes up exponentially. You'll also notice that the folder size is significantly smaller once Save MI Scene is used. Lighting keyframe animation also needs to be added to the list as well. Let's do a bit of a quick animation to the multiplier value of these two lights in our scene manager. All I'm doing here is simply going to the first frame and setting the multiplier values to 0, then going to the last frame and setting it to the respective values of 5 and 8. When I play back, you'll see a cool looking dramatic animated light scenario. We can also keyframe things such as the light color, which is what you see me doing here. Notice that when we scrub through the timeline here, again the refresh rate is pretty slow, so what we need to do is go into the scene manager, select the fill and top lights that we've been editing, and then add them to our animated objects list in the settings tab. All animated objects need to be added to this list with the exception of cameras, as camera movement is always auto-updated by default. Now once the lights are added to the animated object list, our auto-update will be a lot faster once we scrub through the timeline. That's about it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, and hopefully you learned a few tips here that will save you a ton of time in the long run when rendering with iRay and iClone. As always, make sure to check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.